Good morning. This is Bill from Auto Europa Naples on a lovely Florida Friday. Uh, you know, the weather's nice. We had a little bit of a cool front come through, so at least the mornings are good. It's going to be, you know, hot as balls later on, but it's fine now. Uh, we've got temperatures in the high 60s. The humidity is down. It's all very nice. Uh, there's no birds on the wire, but there are a couple screwing around back there. You see him now. It's, he's flapping around in that tree. There he is. I think they have a nest up there where they're breeding little killers. Anyway, hopefully that thing doesn't come down and, you know, start pecking out. There's two of them. There's another one. Hopefully they don't start pecking at my skull. But uh, anyway, if they do, uh, we'll just pause the video and re you know, resume it later. Uh, it's day like, I don't know, day like 30-something of this coronavirus thing. It's, it's absolutely making me insane. Uh, this is my first day as an essential employee. Uh, it turns out that uh, used car dealers in Florida are considered essential. Uh, in fact, just about everything seems to be considered essential. Listen to that. we got an organ donor driving somewhere. Uh, but anyway, um, so I'm about as essential as like the umbrella in a cocktail. But, you know, if, if that's the way Florida sees it, or at least that's the way the Used Car Dealers Association lobbied the governor, then that's fine with me. And here I am. And we'll keep going. Uh, I do have this 05 Mercedes-Benz S55 AMG compressor. Uh, it doesn't technically have compressor in the name, but I just like saying it, so I said it. Uh, but the point today isn't really this car. This is just an example of what this video is going to be about, which is can an average guy, your average Joe, on an average salary own and maintain an AMG car, and particularly one of the higher-end AMG cars like an S-Class or a CL from this vintage. I mean, you're talking about a car that's now, yeah, this one's approaching, what, 15 years old, 16 years old. Uh, the depreciation, needless to say, is completely done. Uh, this thing probably started life in the $120,000 range or beyond and now can be bought for uh, basically 10 cents on the dollar. It's just amazing. Uh, and there's a, there's a reason for that. Uh, the reason is, of course, terror, because people think that these cars are expensive to maintain. And they're not wrong. So let me save you a little bit of trouble. If the title of this video is going to be, Can Your Average Guy Own and Maintain a Mercedes-Benz AMG S-Class, then the very short answer is going to be no. <laughs> and if that's enough for you, then, you know, move on, go to the next video, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you want a more complicated answer that revolves around maybe, uh, then we're going to keep going. So uh, anyway, brief look at this car. So again, this is a 2005. It's the facelift version, which didn't just bring things like improved headlights and some extra looks. It also brought a supercharged charger onto the 5.4 liter AMG V8 and that pumped it up from horsepower somewhere in the mid threes to uh, almost 500, 492 horsepower, about 469 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Uh, the thing is an absolute monster, a monster. I mean this car will bend and warp the space-time universe. It's absolutely incredible and it's very rewarding to drive as such. But can you afford to maintain it? So uh, to answer that question, I have my own, look at this twice, but actually quad pipes at the bottom, beautiful AMG exhaust. Anyway, I asked a couple of friends of mine. Now, one of them owns a, a service shop that focuses on European vehicles, and the other one uh, is sort of a hired gun mechanic. He's a very high-end mechanic. He gets called around for problem cars, does his own little set of people, specializes in Mercedes, and uh, was a former uh, service manager at a local Mercedes dealership. And I quizzed both of them. I won't name any names. Well, it's Andrew and, and Ian are their names. Andrew owns the shop, and Ian is the hired gun. And I said, you know, look, can an average guy own this thing? Andrew's answer was fairly straightforward. And he said, you know, yeah, probably. Reason being because most of these cars by this point have been sorted out. Uh, you know, they come in waves. The original owners buy them, they cost a fortune, they maintain them, they fall into the hands of second owners who then have to do a lot of work to keep them going. Uh, the owners who don't keep them going uh, watch them degrade into crap and end up in a junkyard. So uh, any car that's still around, you know, 15 to 20 years later is probably going to be one that has been maintained, has been sorted out, and most of the expensive stuff has been done. Uh, but he said if it hasn't been done, then you're getting an all kinds of issues and we'll get into those in a minute.
Ian, he focused in on the whole mechanic thing, and, and he's not wrong. He said, look, if you know, if you buy one of these and you take it to the dealer or you take it to some unscrupulous mechanic who's going to bend you over and hose you every chance he gets, then no, you know, you're going to run out of money. But if you find a good mechanic, if you find somebody you trust, if you find someone with a little bit of knowledge and, you know, not putting children through college, then you may end up being able to own and drive one. <clears throat> but let's get into some of the stuff that can ail these cars. I have a little cheat sheet on my phone. Uh, now, the primary difference between the S55 or the S500 with the option is the ABC Sport suspension. And ABC is an incredible suspension system. I mean, it is fantastic. Uh, it does away with the need for springs and sway bars and instead uses a, a hydraulic fluid at a high pressure to basically make this almost 5,000 pound sedan uh, feel like a 3,000 pound sedan. It'll pump up the front if you're braking so the car stays level. It'll pump up the back under acceleration so the car stays level. You know, take a hard right turn, it'll pump up the left. Basically, it does away with uh, any sway and roll that you would expect on a car of this size. Now, the beauty, there he is, look at him, he's coming in. He's keeping an eye on us here. Uh, I don't know where he went, but we'll watch him. Anyway, it does away with um, with the sway and the roll under high performance driving. But the beauty of it is, is because it doesn't add big, heavy sway bars and springs and stuff you normally get on sports sedans. When the system is just running down the road, it's very soft and pliable and gives you a fantastic ride. So you get the best of all worlds. Uh, additionally, it does some adjustments for you if you're, you know, if you're a gangster rolling over dead bodies that you just stabbed to death, you can raise or lower the suspension to get over their heads without causing any damage to your ground effects. I suppose it also would work well in snow or if you're loading the car or bringing it up a ramp. Uh, you can uh, yeah, raise it up uh, one position with the ABC, three with the Aromatic. But um, uh, when you're going down the road at high speeds, it will actually drop the car to make it more dynamic, improve your fuel mileage, all kinds of little neat stuff. But what does it take to maintain? Well, here's the issue with ABC, is it's still expensive. So let's say one of the struts starts leaking. It uses, of course, these hydraulic fluid things. So you walk out and either the front or the rear end is on the ground. You look like a Tijuana lowrider. Uh, well, that's gonna cost you retail about $1,100 per corner. You know, retail 700 for the part, a little bit of labor to put it in. Of course, you have to computer reset the system and balance it afterwards. So. Uh, you're looking at about 4500 bucks to do all four ABC struts. Let's say it needs a pump. Uh, that's the, uh, you know, it, it combines with the power steering pump. In fact, let's just get under the hood so you can see this stuff. <clears throat> God, I do like these cars, though. Now, let's see if I can do this one-handed. I generally have problems with it. Try not to break anything either. <laughs> Look at that big, beautiful, supercharged engine. Okay, so you can see the little sensors and wires running to the top of the struts there. And uh, of course, that's the computer telling the ABC what to do. So if you need those struts, figure 1100 per, so about 4500 for the car. Uh, this is the ABC fluid system. It, it mates with the power steering as well. And if you need a pump for that, you're probably looking at about 2000 bucks. Again, these are full retail costs. Not at the dealer, could be more at the dealer, probably a little bit less at a good independent. Uh, so you've got those issues going on. Uh, now, is it worth that when you look under the hood and see this thing signed by the original AMG technician, in this case, Betty Gonzalez, put this engine together and you know the reason being that she wants you to know she's responsible for your heart beating out of your chest when you hammer it and uh, it is a fantastic engine in this car and mechanically the engine is really good I mean it really doesn't have that much difference uh, from the uh, S500 in terms of maintenance cost the supercharger really doesn't add much in terms of maintenance you're still going to get kind of the standard stuff that comes with 220s and that standard stuff can be uh, uh, you know, your valve cover gaskets, figure 800 retail, uh, rear main seal, that's where they have to drop the trans to uh, 
You see, I've gotten rid of that tranny word. I'm working on it, getting more politically correct by the day. Uh, but anyway, about 1200 bucks to do a rear main seal. Uh, the one AMG add-on might be a supercharger pulley. They can go bad from time to time, and that's going to cost you in the 800-ish range. Uh, again, all retail. <clears throat> so uh, it does come with its own little set of stuff that you have to worry about. Uh, but for the most part, again, these cars have been sorted out by the prior owners. Uh, the headlights, these uh, big by Xenons, they usually last. They haven't been too problematic. AC systems, not very problematic. Uh, they all seem to work fine for the most part. And uh, other than uh, oil leaks, uh, the big concern under the hood is the ABC stuff. In fact, I just had to put in an AMC, uh, what is it, a, a damper, uh, <clears throat> you know, that sort of bolts. It's like a little bomb that would have been thrown by a 30s assassin. It screws on underneath the car. That was in a CL, and uh, that keeps the system nicely balanced. But anyway, I don't know. What did that cost? A few hundred bucks. Uh, but anyway, there it is. That's uh, under the hood of this thing. All right, so what else do we have? Now, these cars have soft closed doors. And uh, they are working on this rather well-maintained car. So you just get it close and it sucks the door in. Nice stuff. Now, if they go bad, they're not cheap. You're looking at about $1,100 per door. Uh, and uh, not a lot of people want to do that. And the good news is, let's say they do break, well, the hell with it. Just close the door a little harder and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, also in the back, let's hit this. Uh, this one has the uh, power operated uh, trunk lid, which is nice, but under here somewhere, under all this mayhem, is the PSE pump, and that is a vacuum pump that, you know, helps the door locks work, runs the door closers, does a lot of stuff. If that pump goes south, uh, it's going to cause you some issues in terms of getting your uh, trunk assist to work, your suck downs, your door closers, and a PSE pump, which they do go bad from time to time, eh, six or seven hundred dollar range to get that replaced. So not terrible. Uh, what about standard service? What does that cost on the car? Well, there's basically two services, the A and B. I know there's a C or something, but it doesn't really matter. Basically, the A service is an oil change with an extra few little bits and pieces. The B service is a little bit more complex. Uh, cabin air filters and brake flushes and that sort of thing. And A service is going to run you, uh, yeah, probably about 250 bucks. And again, this is every 10,000 miles. Uh, the B service is going to run, I don't know, maybe... Uh, 700 bucks and that alternates with the A. So figure every 20,000 miles you're on the hook for a $700 service. Uh, every 60,000 miles you're on the hook for uh, a tranny serve. Oh, God damn it. A transmission service where that gets flushed. Uh, I don't think that's in the Mercedes book, but it comes highly recommended by uh, by your mechanic types. And uh, anyway, every 60,000 miles flush the trans and uh, for that, you're looking at about 450 bucks. <clears throat> what else do we have in this thing that we could talk about? Spark plugs. I don't know. Yeah, it's either 80 or 100,000 miles. It has 16 of them. Uh, so that's not exactly cheap in terms of just buying the plug. So you're looking at probably about 600 bucks uh, very often uh, every 80 or 100,000 miles. So. Anyway, I could go on and on. Here's some things that are not issues on the cars. Uh, evaporators, that's the AC part that goes behind the dashboard. Uh, famously bad in a lot of Mercedes, not so much in these 220 cars. They didn't go bad very often. Uh, and, uh, you know, the instruments, the electronics, the window regulators, that sort of thing, uh, they're all pretty good in this car, so you're probably not going to have to deal with that, at least not very often. But anyway, all that convoluted talk, the question again becomes, so can an average guy maintain one? And, uh, you know, because of the liability, because of the potential for these big repairs, 4500 for struts, four of them, which you wouldn't have to do, but let's say you did, 3000 or 2000 for a pump and, you know, 1000 here, 1000 there, pretty soon you're talking about real money. The answer is no. You know, if you get a bad one, if you get unlucky, if you get one that hasn't been maintained and you become on the hook for all this stuff, uh, it becomes silly. There's no reason for an average guy, even if he could, to spend that sort of money. Oh, brake jobs. 
Should have gotten into that. You see this has big eight piston calipers up front. Uh, that does increase the cost of brakes, but not insanely. If you figure a front brake job on a Honda is about 400 bucks, you can double it for this car. So you're talking about 800. And uh, you know, on a Mercedes, the brakes tend to last a while. So it's not the end of the world. But anyway, there's no reason for this guy to spend that kind of money to maintain it. You know, he's better off getting an S430 or an S500 without the ABC, has less liability, less potential for a giant repair, and can still have almost as much fun uh, without the supercharger. Uh, now, if you do get one that's been well looked after, that's, you know, you've got sort of a, a good vibe, the car's clean, it appears serviced, the Carfax shows servicing, uh, then it might be worth taking the chance. It depends on how lucky you feel. Uh, and uh, of course you do get the AMG badge on the back, which is quite nice because it's gonna uh, Even if the car is a little bit conservative It doesn't let them know that something very wicked is coming and that's uh, that's what this car is so So there it is. So there is the uh, the short and the long answer I, very quickly I will say that a big part of it Ian is right about that is what kind of mechanic you get to work on it if you have the right guy who's going to look after you, who's not going to take you to the cleaners, it becomes much more conceivable. If you're a babe in the woods and you're just driving to the dealer, drop it off with the service guy, go in and get a croissant or, uh, you know, a cupcake and a cup of coffee, come out and get the bill, he's going to nail you. They are going to nail you to the cross. Uh, that's just the way they make money. So uh, if that is who you are, then strongly recommended you avoid, uh, you know, the more complicated of the Benz products. We won't even get into the S600. Uh, this car, they do have a lot of neat stuff on this car. There's a quick view of the back seat. You can see it's got lumbar, very nice clean car, like the window shades. They were probably 800 bucks from Mercedes. Has keyless go, that was an option in this car. But anyway, let's just get in and drive it. So foot on the brake, tap that guy. <laughs> and there is a big, mean-spirited V8 firing to life. I just love these big German Q-ships. Absolutely love them. All right, so what do we have? We have lights burned out in that, do we? Yeah, it looks like we got a light burned out in the instrument cluster, so there's something we got. Maybe it's slowly coming on. Uh, anyway, so uh, there you go. You've got your special little AMG cluster. You've got uh, this one has about 94,000 miles. You got a special AMG steering wheel with grip at ease here at the 10 and 2. Uh, you see that minus there and a plus there behind the wheel. Uh, you can flippity flip your way through the gears. It's about 35% faster than just leaving it in D. Uh, very bulletproof five speed in this car, which works great and is very competent. So, frankly, shift the gears with your right foot it's going to be probably better than you are determining what gear it should be in. Uh, we're almost to R on the fuel gauge, that being refill. Probably something you should get used to. The gas mileage in these things is crap. Uh, over here we've got uh, your seat controls, which are nice. This has hot and cool seats. Lovely option. Uh, keeps your, uh, what do they call them, ball breezers. So in a summer day you're not going to have a, some kind of a stew down south. Let's go for a spin. Uh, and I will say this, the car is a supercar bargain. I mean, you've got to understand that you're getting, you know, Porsche 911, look at Marty. I mean, honestly, who goes out looking like that? Anyway, uh, it's a sports car bargain. I mean, you've got zero to 60 in the mid to high fours. You've got quarter mile times, uh, I don't know, what, high 12s, low three, very, very quick. Uh, the thing is a rocket ship. Uh, we're gonna put it in, what are we gonna put it in? Sport setting, let's see here. Comfort, manual, sport. Uh, that does firm things up. Over here you've got your ABC. We're gonna click that on active body control. So that is a difference, you know, whereas in the, um, uh, in the, what do you call it, the, the non-ABC cars, the ones with just aromatic, uh, you run between the three different settings and it really doesn't change too much. With ABC it does. Uh, you know, when it's in the soft mode, the car is a lot more compliant. When it's in the, um, when it's in the sport mode, you can feel the sportiness in it. And it changes some of the transmission settings, the engine tune, that sort of thing. Do we have any heat in this car yet? Nah, not really. 
I'll go slow for another minute. Going down the road, there's absolutely nothing like an S-Class. I mean, it just has the most lovely, incredible poise. You just feel so much like a master of the universe. I mean, it eats, it's a car's made to eat up the Autobahn. That's what it's all about. That's the whole point of this thing, to run 155 miles an hour, as many hours as you like, in incredible comfort where you really don't even feel like you're going that fast. Uh, the car is just that well designed. Get a little bit of heat in there. You can just feel the responsiveness of that, uh, that big supercharger under the hood. I think we got enough heat now, so let's see what we got. The brakes are insane. You hit them hard enough, they'll actually activate the pre-safe. Car will think it's in an accident. <laughs> that traction control, holy shit. Okay, so there it is. I mean, the thing is a friggin' rocket ship. Uh, you just put the foot down and everything starts warping around your eyeballs. And that's the whole point of owning one. I mean, that's why people would want to. It is a joy uh, to abuse the scar, <laughs> at least on the highways and byways. I mean, it is a lot of fun uh, to hammer this thing down and surprise the hell out of the Mustang GT or the Corvette next to you. Not many cars on the road are gonna out-drag this thing, even though it's 15 years old. I mean, it's fast as hell. And, uh, you know, that's the joy. So, is it worth the cost? Well, that's gonna be up to you. Uh, in terms of the car that you find for sale, in terms of the mechanic that you have to repair it, and uh, in terms of, uh, you know, whether or not you think the, uh, the price to play is worth the, uh, is worth the upkeep. So, uh, anyway, there it is. Uh, I appreciate you guys having a look today. Uh, being an essential, I'm going to keep going. We'll be back on Monday. We'll try to find something else to do a video on. And uh, really appreciate it. I'm absolutely loving, you know, putting these things up and reading what you guys have to say. You're really keeping me going during all this uh, insanity. So, thank you for that. And we will see you with the next one. Take care.